Hey everyone, good afternoon. If you are joining me and Sandra, these were her super fun Seahawk nails, which I enjoyed doing very much with Volt and Captive. Yeah, this is Volt and Captive, and I'm sure Polar. So we're saying goodbye to these. I mean, they had to lose at some point, right? They always say that they don't really like to go undefeated for too long because it makes like so much pressure. So I looked up the year that they went to the Super Bowl and they had won four games and then lost one. So winning five games and losing one isn't that terrible. Plus they played really good. And honestly, if it hadn't been for those stupid penalties, we would have gotten the first down and we would have won. So yes. If, it's, if we're going to lose, at least it's by something so close and something stupid. Because if they had just not been penalized. All right. So I'm doing um, using my zebra sanding bands. I love them. They zip off color very quickly, as you can see. Do you want much length taken off on these? No. Okay. Let's get a little more light. I mean, just a little less. Than what the grow out is. All right, I'll just reshape them and okay. go from there. When I remove around the cuticle, as you guys can see, I'm not doing a ring of fire technique. I'm not doing a circle like this. I'm buffing it with the front of my bit. So it's a different technique that I kind of developed. I don't know when, but I've been doing it for ages because I. When I would get my nails done from other educators, I hated when they would give me a ring of fire. Obviously, everybody does. So I started developing this other technique. So as you can see, there's still like a halo right there where I don't touch the cuticle. And I crank it. So some people are like, what speed do you use? Probably near 30 right there because it's almost at my max. Then when I'm going around here, I'm reduced down to lower it doesn't tell me because this one's not digital um but probably 10 so i i use a foot pedal so that i can really slow the speed down and i'm buffing this way and one of the nice things is if there is any lift it just pops right off so it's a really nice way to prep without creating a ring of fire or anything like that Look down the barrel, look from the side, see if there's anything else that you need to remove. And then again, I crank up the speed with my foot, doing this part, getting that base off, and then carefully around the sides and feathering up towards the cuticle. It'll be interesting this year, though, to see how much of a Super Bowl there's going to be. Those tickets are going to be, like, prime because no one's going to be able to go. Mm -hmm. There's still only a couple of places you can go actually watch the games. And it's not going to get any better, so. Mm -hmm. Makes me think, where should we go fly to go see a game? But, nope. It's time to be home for a few months and enjoy the holidays. I think the, uh... Christmas tree is going up a bit early this year. I'm definitely in the party of putting it up early. Welcoming the end of uh, 2020 as quick as possible. <laughs> right? Aren't we all? So again, cute little 12 nails. They were darling. Pushing up towards the cuticle with the front of my file on a low speed. I 
Hey, there's a few of you out there hanging out with us. Who is it? Say hi. Don't be shy. It's a quiet room. If no one talks, I'll think no one wants to hang out and watch these. So then I don't do them. And then people get mad at me. And I'm like, well, you got to say hi. So I know you're wanting to see it. I've been slacking on my YouTube, though. I do have some people messaging me there. I haven't seen any new videos. Hello, Mary. Thank you for not being shy and saying hi. I like to know that people are hanging out with us. Even if you don't cheer on the Seahawks, we understand. Not everybody lives here. Oh, hey again, Courtney. From Ohio. Now, Courtney, the important question. Did you go enjoy Cedar Point while it was still super dead? Because we did, and it was the most magical day to be in a park with, like, a hundred other people and be able to go on every ride while it was still completely empty. That was pretty spectacular. I do have to say. Ah, oh, Debbie. Miss you, girl. One of my old clients. moved away I had to do some deleting on my phone I learned hi Christy Bell I learned that um if you have too many pictures on your phone and it's using up too much of your storage space, you can't go live. Who knew? Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've been making sure I've got them backed up somewhere and then deleted a bunch so that I can make sure I could go live. And I'll just start trying to make sure I delete these videos pretty quick. But yeah, even if you don't plan on saving it, Facebook will not let you do it or your phone. Will, I don't know. It was interesting. I was kind of surprised. Didn't know that was a thing, but it's a thing. All right. Get all the dust off onto the Valentino. Does a pretty good job, I'd say, of collecting that. That's some Seahawk colored dust right there. And then... Some people ask what I do with the dust is I actually pound it into my, um, I pound it into my trash can between clients. So I always have a nice clean filter. All right. I put a towel underneath my workspace because I like the cushion. And then we'll do this so that everyone knows who it is. All right. It's still a little dark. Trying to get it not be so dark, peoples. And that's about as good as I think it's going to get. All right, here we go. I'm going to grab out of my disinfectant tray my three most important items. And dry them very well of my disinfectant. I use Let's Touch. I've been using it for almost 20 years, and I love it. I love it so much, I finally started selling it on my website because people always ask me where I could get it. And the place I recommended went out of business. So um, this is my bit, all clean and dry. You want to make sure that you guys are putting your bits into your, uh, your e-files dry because if they are wet, you are going to ruin your e-file. So make sure you dry them before putting them in. Hello to Megan and Angela. Thanks for joining me, guys. It's going to be a pretty... Oh, I don't know who that is. Oh, it's my husband. It's going to be a pretty simple nail art um, technique that I'm going to be doing on her. We're just going to be doing a basic glitter fade, and then I'm going to be using some of the fall pasties because um, she has some leaves on there she liked. I did them on mine, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about, these little leaves. Those are the pasties that we have. Um, oh, no wonder. I was missing this. I'm like, no wonder we're not able to tug and pull her quite as easily. 
it's magical, that thing. It's my wrist assist. I always have it propped under my client's wrists. It lifts them up properly. So I'm just gonna give her a little push, push, push. I was hoping you'd go live with her. Live, oh, live with her. <laughs> live with her, I guess live and live is the same thing. Um, Yes, well, I thought her Seahawk nails were just too darn cute, so might as well. And you had said that you liked it, so that's nice. Are you keeping this shape on her nails? She does like this kind of pointed almond, so um, I believe so, unless you're not changing your shape, right? No. Mm -hmm. So we're going to shorten them a little bit and reshape, but yeah, she likes kind of the pointed almondy kind of a look. So I'll be reshaping them to make sure they're all even again. I'm just coming around with my 2S bit, lifting up the cuticle and carefully gliding around the side. She gets a hangnail there, you guys see that? That's super lovely. Mm -hmm. Are hangnails one of the reasons you missed me during quarantine? No. You can talk. You don't have to be quiet. Yes, I missed you. <laughs> and I did get lots of comments on my Seahawk nails. Oh, good. Well, I always get comments on my nails, so. But Seahawks even more. It is that season. I did some neon green nails with blue and silver foil earlier today. Oh, nice. So that was pretty fun. Those are going to be nice and shiny for her next five weeks or so before she comes in. I have a terrible time with that shape. It always goes wonky on the left side. Um, that is your own visualness. And so sometimes it's you're pushing harder on one side than the other. And that's why you get that shape. Um, you probably, I'm sure you're already doing this, but turn it around from their perspective so you can see where you're starting to get wonky. But typically if you can make, I don't know what I just dropped. Typically if you can make one really good one, then you can mimic all of the rest of them. So focus on making one perfect and then go from there. I'm going to try to clean this up because she's got a lot kind of sticking out that we don't want to catch on the file. because that would be sad. Did you know we hit water? We have a well. Oh, you do? We do. Oh, awesome. It's very exciting and let me tell you, very expensive. Oh, I bet it was. <laughs> it was better than what we thought because they only had to go 140 feet. That being said, when they finally installed the well, they were like, well, it's like, maybe two gallons a minute and you're probably going to want more than that at some point point. and so we're like that's fine at some point we'll dig deeper but right now we need to save every penny we can to actually build the house so if we have water at all we'll take it yeah. so um we'll put in a big holding tank we're going to do that ourselves because i have learned that these people charge almost double for their materials than what the materials cost which i just think is not nice like the pump, I looked online, it was like 900 bucks, and they wanted like $1,300 for the pump. And that's not counting any of the install costs. That's just the pump. So the tank was a lot more as well. So we will be doing the tank and everything ourselves because we try to save a dime anywhere possible. Yeah, the markup is... It's ridiculous. Like, uh -huh. if I can buy that at retail at that price, it should be price matched. <laughs> like, you're installing it. You're not selling it. Yeah, no kidding. But uh, what are you going to do? It's kind of one of those, it is what it is. Try not to know more information than you need to know. Because if I didn't know that information, I would think, oh, that's great. It's a great price. Except I do know because I research everything, which is my problem. Uh, can you go over it step by step? Um, Gail. The shaping? Sure. Yeah, we're going to go over it in just a moment. So good. I'm glad this video is going to help somebody. 
That will always makes me happy. All right, I'm gonna take my old file to prep my new file, which is typically what I do. Your cuticle on the towel. So I take my old file and prep the edges of my new file. I'm using the white files right now because accents changed the zebra files i mean they may not have changed them it might have been the manufacturer that changed them but i'm not pleased so until i find replacements for them i went back to the white ones because they're a little coarser but they're still not my favorite now so now i'm on the search for new files that i love because i loved the zebra files and it made me cry that they changed them on me all right so first i'm blending in the cuticle then I'm coming down and you wanna change the shape depending on what they like. So she likes more of a pointed almond. So I'm gonna come almost down like a stiletto and then the last 10% or so, round it. And you wanna be doing one side and then the other side. And see right now how I'm just going one side and then the other side from underneath? That's gonna make sure that the underneath is completely smooth so if i look at it from the side it should be completely even from one side to the other and then i always prep the cuticle again because i want no lifting ever hi beth all right so i'm going to go blend the cuticle blend 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 and then coming up from the corners and where her natural nail meets is where I start to taper down, almost like a stiletto. So you get that more V shape and then that last 10% round it, okay? Then come underneath, come underneath and finish the front. Check it, hold yourself back a little bit and make sure that both sides are completely even. Then I'm gonna come up over the top and make sure that this side and this side are all beveled down because when you do that shaping, you're gonna have it be um, higher in those spots and you wanna make sure it's completely rounded, okay? So then you can compare and you can go, okay, this one looks slightly more pointy than this one. So I'm just going to, before I get too far, I wanna try to keep them as consistent as possible and check them that way. Consistency is key. All right. Oh, I did not do the cuticle area. Cuticle. Mucho importante. Hi, Beth. All right, so. Bevel cuticle area. Make sure it disappears. When are you done with it? When it's disappeared. So if you see a little tiny white there, that's not disappeared. File it till it's gone. Okay, and I'm gonna come over here. Again, coming down almost like a stiletto. So I have about 10% left and then round. And check it with the other one. And I'll also check the length. This one's quite a bit shorter. So I'm gonna shorten that. Again, bring that side to side, round the last 10%. And I'm checking cuticle to free edge, and I want them to be equal. So the middle finger was shorter. So to make sure that they match, you've got to shorten the other one. There we go, that's better. And then stand back from it and look. Let's see how it's doing. Beth says she can't wait for camp. She misses all the happy faces. I agree. I'm going to start um, talking to educators again. I know there's some new educators that are adding in and some classes might be getting changed because educators might have some new products and things like that. So 
I'll be updating that soon um, so that people, if they want to ask for a gift certificate from their family for camp, they can. So I'm checking to see at what, how much of this I need to shorten off. And then again, coming down straight, last 10%, round it out. And bevel and prep the cuticle. Yeah, last minute's always the trickiness. The nice thing is, is that, you know, people are able to get flights on super killer deals that have a hundred percent refund. So that if something does happen they and they can't go, then that's cool. They don't have to worry about it. Um, I think flying is so nice right now. It's like not as many people, everything's clean. You get your, you know, nobody's in the middle seat. Well, on some, I think, I think Southwest is already doing the middle seats, but we fly Alaska Mars mostly. So we don't have to worry about that. I think they're not doing the middle seat till at least after the new year, if not later. I don't think we'll be any farther after the new year than we were in June. Well, one of my coworkers just flew to Arizona, mm -hmm. and they oversold the whole flight, so they were putting people in the middle seat. Mm -hmm. Was that on Alaska? Uh-huh. Oh, really? Yeah. Bad Alaska. Bad, bad. Shame on you mm -hmm. for telling people that. Where is camp going to be again? Gail, right now? Sorry, I needed a drink. Uh, we are talking about the 10-year anniversary camp at Camp Burton in outside of Seattle. So it's the original location where I started organizing it in 2009. Um, so it's the 10th camp. Um, I think it's, I don't think I've done 10 there. I think I've done nine there, but then I did the cruise and then of course started doing the east coast as well so um i don't have a location lined up for the next one that will be hopefully in texas um but the one coming up is in april and that one is camp burton which is really fun it's going to be fun to go back to where it all started i'm going to compare the length and that one's just a smidge shorter Make sure I'm coming straight. This one had a little bit of a, a wave to the side. So you wanna make sure that you're coming straight down and curling just the end. That's for this pointed almond. A regular almond is a slightly different look, but this pointed almond. Um, but anyway, for those who haven't been to Seattle, this is like, you know, Grey's Anatomy land. You can come take a ferry and all that because camp is on the other side of, um, Seattle where you do have to take a ferry to get to the island so get to it's fun it's really fun it's really not fun when you miss it though <laughs> there were a couple of years where you know I'm always the last one to pack up and get done and leave and everyone was on you know everyone that was helping was on this one ferry and I get there and drive up just in time to see it pull away and I'm like no but they come pretty often so it wasn't a big deal but I have, I, I think, I think Vicky, my lovely friend Vicky, uh, enjoyed taking pictures of me from the car deck of me standing watching the ferry drive away. Mm -hmm. Because that's what she does. Have all the protests stopped? Have you heard of much protesting? Well, they were trying to riot in Bellevue a few days ago. In Woodenville, too. Woodenville, too? crazy like to the point where there someone's dropping off like the bricks and everything again um and the police or whatever they're sending emails out i don't know if it's the police or like the electric company i know a lot of people were getting emails of stay home don't go out um because of protests now it's not in this area winville is about 25 minutes away and bellevue is probably about 35 minutes away Eh, depending on what way you go, but um, they're around. I mean, there's not a lot going on in Seattle. Everyone was so interested in that whole thing that happened in downtown Seattle, that street. I don't remember what it was called. 
that was trying to be like its own state or something. Oh, right. But it was like an alley. <laughs> and people that don't know Seattle are like, oh my gosh, they're taking over the town. It's like, yeah, no, not really. They want to think they are, but no. They took over an alley <laughs> that nobody goes down. Um, but, you know, the city is really... It's gotten overrun by um, a lot of drug users and stuff. And we need a new mayor to come in and really clean up Seattle the way Giuliani cleaned up New York. Like, desperately, we need that. Just when you could afford to go to nail camp. Well, save up and come to the one in Vashon. It's going to be a blast. Lots of fun people will be able to be there and... We've got some that loved camp in uh, Maryland so much. They already signed up, so they'll be joining us in uh, Washington as well. So don't be afraid. Come join us. We limit it. So as of now, it's limited at 120, but we can go to 125 of this facility, which is what I typically have. Um, it's just at 100 because I didn't know what the government requirements would be at the time. I believe we're already still we're, we're already at where we could have an event of 100. I just want to make sure that we can have 125 before I open it up for more. Um, so I'm just, again, comparing the length. Cuticle, cuticle to tip. This one's a little long. Again, coming in straight on the sides. And like, like a stiletto, straight on the sides. And then that last 10% round it. Okay, that's your pointed almond. All right, one more. A little bit of green left. When you're doing an actual almond, you're doing a lot more movement with your file to make it um, more rounded along the sidewalls than the pointed almond. I tend to make it more straight along the sidewalls, so... That's just the way I do it. If someone else does it a different way, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone has their own style. And again, once you do it, step back and look at it and see that both sidewalls, like if I look at both of these corners right now, this one is a little bit rounded on this side and I want them to be even. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this a little bit straighter with my file. And again, bevel down. You wanna make sure that your shaping is following the top surface and all the way around to the sides. There we go. Now they're both coming straight out like a V, which is my goal for this shape. All right, she's done. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe her with some prep and wipe. And we're gonna go straight into Trinity. Make sure your prep and wipe that you're rubbing is you're rubbing straight onto her new growth. That is where you want um, prep and wipe to go. It's a combination of prep and wipe and acetone, and that's gonna help dry the nails out without having to use a primer. I probably use about 25% acetone and 75% prep and wipe. It's also helpful when I'm doing stamping because it lets me um, remove any stamping polish that might be around the uh, the fingers. All right, going to take my trusty 106. I pulled a new one recently. It's always good to pull new ones now and then when you need them. I'm going to grab my Trinity Clear and we're gonna do one coat and then she's gonna go in flash cure for two seconds at a time. Float around the cuticle and then just touch that pillow and glide down. Very easy. I like to go around the sides a little bit just to make sure everything is smooth. Okay, two seconds, please. Oh, sorry, I turned it around. <laughs> I'm like, it's gone. My bad. <laughs> if you were watching earlier, I was doing these tips, and so they were curing in the light still. All right, go ahead and come back. It's just two seconds, and then you'll come back. And the two seconds flash cures it so that it doesn't move on me and it doesn't get hot for her. 
That was a lot, so I'm going to put most of that back. You don't need that much with this. But it's easy just to take your brush and just glide it back into the pot. And your fills should be relatively easy. They shouldn't be painful. You should be able to do this and get it on, let it smooth, two seconds in the light, and then you go straight to your color. There should be no finish filing needed. Um, if you're spending a lot of time finish filing, you need to ask yourself, why? Why do I do so much work when I don't need to? Because you have to remember that your finish, your filing, that's all shoulder work. And I know multiple nail techs who have had to quit their careers because of filing. So save your shoulder and figure out how to control your product and use products that work the way you like to use. Now, for many, many years, if you've been watching some of my older videos, you'll see that I use natural, which is a thicker gel. We still have some. I still like to use it a lot. Um, but the reason I do a lot of the demos with Trinity is because a lot of newer techs don't have UV lamps. Um, and you can't cure uh, natural unless you have a hybrid or a UV lamp. So that's one of the main reasons I've started using a Trinity a lot more for my videos. So that's, oh, the shoulds in life. <laughs> All right, last one. And you can remind them when they put their thumb in that they can just put it in for two seconds and take it out just so that it's a flash cure so they prevent any heat on themselves. Now, if you put this on and you decide you want more of an arch somewhere, once you have a smooth coat on the nail, it's very easy to do. You just take a little bit and you string it right where you want it and you let Trinity do the work. And I can just go through, make sure the sides are cleaned up. But as you can see, it's completely smooth. You don't have to do anything. So you can go in for just a few seconds and let it cool for a second out of the light before you put it back. Any big plans for the weekend? <laughs> Trick or treating with the grandkids, and then of course the nice. Seahawks game. Oh, that's exciting! Yeah, Jared's taking Larissa out trick or treating, and well, she might be going to party. I don't know what she's doing. She's at that age where she's got friends that want to have a party, and I'd rather her not go to a party. I'm perfectly fine with her being outside trick or treating, but party, not so much. Yeah, but I don't know. Who, it's partially because I don't. Don't know these people and if you're gonna go hang out at someone's house I want to know these people so yeah. I don't know if that's happening which she might get mad at me for but I'm like eh, you can go get candy with dad <laughs> so I'll hand out what people come here for but we didn't have very many last year and I know some parents aren't letting their kids trick-or-treat poor kids we so, never get any yeah you go on so are you going to their neighborhood uh, yeah, we'll go over to their house because they live in a housing development, so. Nice. Lots of houses close together. Perfect. That's the best kind. At least for trick-or-treating. Mm-hmm. Hi, Delia. Delia. I uh, see this is the name. We always mess it up. Delia. Delia. It looks like you want to say Delilah. It looks like you want to say Delia, but I mess it up every time. It's a pretty looking name. I just don't know how to say it. <laughs> so this one scooped a little bit in the front, so I added just a smidge extra. And there's a piece of lint. Pull that out. Okay, two seconds. Oh, good. So it looks like it's, it looks like it's, it sounds like it looks. Delia, D-E-L-I-A. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> I 
I got my Invisalign this week for my bottom teeth. Oh, did you? Mm-hmm. See? You didn't even know. No. So, luckily it doesn't make me have a funny lisp or anything, which is nice. But, um, I'll have it for like six months, and then they'll put in my missing tooth. Well, what's nice is that after like eight weeks, they'll start putting it into the Invisalign, the missing tooth. So then it will look like I have all four teeth, um. and I don't. So that's kind of fun and tricky. And then um, we'll go back to Croatia to do the implant like next summer maybe. Because it's so much cheaper there. I can do it for less than a thousand bucks instead of the astronomical fees they want to charge here. So back to Croatia we go, which it should be pretty cheap. All right, so she has chosen cocoa and some Aurora apricot. So we're going to do a quick fade with these. And then we'll throw a couple of leaves on one of them, like mine. So this is just standard just fade stuff. I go just over half. It's interesting when I talk to someone who talks about needing dental work. I'm like, oh, we went to Croatia. And they're like, you did what? <laughs> People don't realize that it can be so much cheaper going somewhere that doesn't want to cost an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. And it's the same stuff. It's the same company where they get their stuff from Germany as the ones here, the titanium. Plus get a trip out of it especially if you turn in miles then you not only save money and you get a trip yeah no kidding that's nice yeah i still have like three days from my croatia trip to journal i just you know i get home and then i get busy so I haven't, oh ignore my husband he's making lots and lots of noise he probably has earphones in so he doesn't even know that he's making lots and lots of noise yep walked right by with his giant ear head things in I got him the zapper did I tell you about that one of my clients was like you should get him a, you should get him a shock collar uh -huh. <laughs> so that I could tell him hey by the way you're being super loud or if I need him I can let him know but he's oblivious Mm -hmm. anything when he walks by with those in because they're noise canceling headphones and he'll be listening to the radio and since they're noise canceling he hears nothing at all so um i thought it was the funniest thing so i did i got it for him and i gave him to gave it to him at christmas i think there's a video on my facebook of this <laughs> and he's like we don't have a dog <laughs> i'm like that's for you <laughs> That's hilarious. He was like, what? I'm like, for when you have your headphones on. <laughs> he thought it was funny, but he didn't think it was quite as funny as I did. <laughs> and I have yet to be able to get I'm like, it has a buzz feature. You can just put it in your pocket and it'll vibrate like an old school beep, beep, beeper. And he was like, all right. But I still haven't been able to get him to wear it. Oh. <laughs> or put it in his pocket, but... I charged it. I figured out that it was, it's not a battery thing. It's a charge thing. So I have it charged. And one of these days, I'm just going to sneak up and I'm going to be all stealth-like and see if I can slide it in his pocket without him knowing. <laughs> it should be entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it would. But the shock parts are brutal looking. I'm like, man, that'd be kind of scary. All right, so again, this is Coco. Just going to go through and do my quick second coat so we get a good depth of color. Let's make sure we're in camera. If there's any, is there any nail art stuff? 
stuff that anyone's been struggling with lately. I run out of things to do videos on sometimes. And if somebody has a suggestion or a need or a want to see situation, it helps. So then I will suggest it to a client. And if they like that idea, I can do it and video it so you all can see. So this doesn't have to be a perfect blend. This isn't like a total ombre where you're trying to blend one color into another. There's about to be a bunch of glitter going on this. And so all you're trying to do is make it so there's not a straight line. You don't want to have to try to cover up a straight line. Um, but a blended nail like this, you're not going to have to work at covering it up. So you just want to blur this line. You don't want it to be a super sharp line. So don't worry about it being perfect. You're not really going to see it. You just would have more of a chance of seeing the line if it was a straight line instead of a blended line. What kind of mount am I using? Um, it's one off Amazon or Archon. Uh, I use both sometimes. It depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll use the Archon one. Um, and sometimes I will use just this little one. Depends on how close I want to get to what I'm doing. Um, and it just, the phone clips in it and then you do it. Fades or ombres are always a struggle for me. Well, here's the thing with fades and ombres. Everyone has this standard of how the Russians do it. And they look absolutely perfect and stunning on camera. But most of the time, if you actually were to do it the way they do it, they take like an hour just for the fading part. Their appointments are minimum two hours. And they'll spend an hour just with the tiniest little brush, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Over and over and over and over. I've seen it. I've been to a class where they demonstrated this and it took her about 20 minutes for one nail. And I'm like, this is seriously what you do? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, this is not real life. Not real life. So I try to show people with techniques and ways that make it doable in the salon. Using an ombre brush, trying to use translucent colors. Um, like if you're doing a dark red ombre using Diva or using pearl colors that blend easier. So trying to use things that make your life easier when it comes to blending is very helpful because honestly, most of the blending pictures or the ombre pictures out there, they're beautiful nails from Russia that they took four times longer than the amount of time you have, minimum. I don't, ha I don't have two hours, so and I don't have an hour to spend on doing an, a fade. But they literally take a tiny little brush. I'll show you the size of the brush. And then put that in. They use a brush this size. Okay, it's not focusing. Focus. Focus on my little tiny brush. Mm. They use a brush this size and they do this. All the way over and then all the way back and then all the way over. And they do that like 50 times. So it's crazy. Ah, oh, hello, Madison, darling. All right, so I'm going to use apricot. I grabbed um, the gold and the apricot to see what one she wanted. She chose apricot, which is, oh, so the most popular one this time of year. If you don't yet have your Aurora apricot in your drawer, you should because your clients are missing it right now. So I'm just going to quickly dab a line of this on all the nails doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get it on there so I have something to fade. Oopsies. And then once I get it on there, then I'm just going to pull down. And what I love about the Auroras is that they have three sizes of glitter in them. And so you want to pull down the fine glitter, but leave the chunky kind of towards the middle. So if I grab some of that chunky, I'll pull it back down. And what that does is it keeps it so that you've got that chunky glitter in the middle and it gives you that perfect ombre effect with your glitters. See that? So pretty. Madison says, I love apricot. Keep those secret because I don't want to run out. That's not nice. Not nice to keep them secret. You don't have to run out. There's always more in stock. 
I try to keep everything in stock. I hate running out of stuff at the store. And Aurora's are, I would say, in every couple of orders, we're sending Aurora's to somebody. Because they are the best. So pretty. Simple, easy, very effective, very elegant, very autumnal. You doing much for Thanksgiving? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> You're like, that is over three weeks away. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we were trying to figure it out because my cousin whom we haven't seen in a while needs to come up and see his family so we we're gonna go to my brother's house but now we're not because my brother is difficult so i'm like just come here so my cousin can come here oh that's nice where's where are they from um he's down in california oh so he's just so busy and he's single and so he's always by himself and I'm like you need to come be with your family so that'll be good for him mm -hmm. loneliness is not a good thing no I need to grab a bit more on this one you can never have too much but you can have too little Pull some down. Push the chunkies up. Try to keep them off kind of the tip area a little bit so that it looks like a little bit more of a fade. All right, folks, what do you think? Pretty? All right, I'm going to go ahead and let those cure. S'mores nails. <laughs> I do love a good s'more. Mm -hmm. But cannot s'more on keto right now, so it's a little harder. Uh... But I'm determined to figure out how to make stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, where there's a will, there's a way. That's right. So... Someone gave me a pecan or a pumpkin cheesecake recipe the other day, and I'm like, well, that sounds worth trying. I like those. Mm -hmm. Well, who doesn't like cheesecake? It was funny, actually. My good friend, Sarah, she moved in and lived with me for a couple years. Oh, this is like BC before child, so it's a long time ago. Um... And I'd gone out with someone to the Cheesecake Factory and brought some cheesecake home. And it was I think it was breakfast because that's what cheesecake is supposed to be after the night out. So, <laughs> didn't you know? No. Yeah. So I was sitting on, like, we were standing around our little island in our apartment. And she's like, what is that? And I'm like, cheesecake. She goes, oh, I don't like cheesecake. I'm like, you need to take a bite of this. I think it was like Adam's Peanut Butter Cheesecake from... Cheesecake Factory, which is my all-time favorite thing. Oh. And it's like heaven. And so I'm like, you need to try this. She goes, uh, I don't like cheesecake. And I'm like, you have to try this before you are allowed to leave this island. <laughs> she was like, fine. So she took the tiniest little bite and she went, hmm. And she took another bite and she was like, hmm. She took another bite and she's like, I like cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, see? It's all about the kind of cheesecake. I didn't like cheesecake when I first tried it either because, I don't know, the kind that someone gave me was just not as acceptable as Adam's peanut butter ripple or whatever that is. It's oh, delicious. Yum. Ah, Adela used to work at the Cheesecake Factory. Danger. You know what I wish someone would come out with? The recipe for the corn fritters that they used to make. Oh, they were so good. I was so sad when they discontinued them. It was our, like, Christmas tradition because... In Bellevue, they have this big snowflake lane. Oh, I bet you they're not doing that this year. Big snowflake lane where there's, like, music and a band and a parade and all this stuff. And they do it every night. And there's a cheesecake factory right outside. And we used to go in and we would um, order the corn fritters. And we'd have those. And then right before 
it was time to go outside for the parade. We'd order our dinner and then we'd go outside and watch the parade. And then we'd come inside and dinner would be like just getting delivered. It was perfect. And then they took away our corn fritters. I'm like, oh, they oh, ruined man. everything. It was tradition. They were so good. Nobody makes those like that. So that's very sad. Someday. All right, go ahead and put that in. Yes, Sharon, sorry, yes, it's Coco from Luxio. So Coco and Apricot. So now I'm just going to quickly do a coat of matte on. I have a sneeze that wants to sneeze. Ah, nope. Nope. Ugh, I hate when that happens. I'm just going to do matte on. You can do, uh, actually, I don't want to do matte on. I want this to be tack free. So I, my sneeze is wanting to happen. It's not happening. All right, just going to wipe the matte on off. I'm just going to use Outshine. I just want something tack free real quick. Um, I don't use Outshine a ton. It kind of sits on my table and gets gooey. Go ahead and put that on. Gets uh, My bottle gets a bit beat up. Um, but this is just going to give me a non-tack surface for some leaves, for some pasties. And then go ahead and come out. And this is also what I would use if I was stamping. You want to use your Outshine. So I'm going to put a couple of... Do you have any preference or you just want to grab a few? Do you want any words like Hello Autumn or anything like that? Um, No, just... Just some leaves? Yeah, like maybe this you one, like that one and any other one. A couple of them? Okay. So after you've had... Um, you just need to have at least 10 seconds in the outshine and then you can come out. And pasties are super easy because you just grab them. They're so, so thin. And this one is number 348, if you're looking online. And uh, you can apply these just straight onto your tack-free surface. I just rub them in. The sticker part's just going to disappear, which is nice. And if you want a partial one, which I like to do a lot of the time, I'll just cut it. And apply it right on the edge. And then you get kind of a half of a leaf. All right, and then you can go straight to your gloss. So I'm going to use my Luxio gloss. Typically, that works fine over the um, Auroras. I touched the cuticle there. So if you touch the cuticle, you want to wipe it and get it in the light to freeze before it just, because it's like a floodgate being open. It'll keep running into that little spot. Oh, maybe I didn't. I thought I did. It's fine. And just encapsulate these. And because this is um, a top coat going on to a shiny surface from the outshine, I'm going to have her flash this for a few seconds. Two seconds, please. Okay. And then I'll do the rest. Okay, so now we're going to pick the same ones-ish over here, mm, you want them falling, it's fall, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never noticed with this one, that's kind of cool, mm, there's some on there, that's pretty fun, it's decisions is the hard part.
Okay. So again, you just want to use your Luxio gloss. And um, if I do that one last, then I won't need to uh, do these ones. I can flash cure it before I do the thumb. Oh, there's a lint. And just smooth this out. Now, if you had wanted to put chunkier glitter, like mine has some chunky glitter, you'll want to um, probably use your Options Clear, Options Crystal Clear as your top coat because it's got a little bit thicker viscosity and it'll float right over all those glitters. So that would be my suggestion if you are using a chunkier glitter and doing, um, doing that to encapsulate that glitter properly. Just use your Options Clear, Options Crystal Clear as your top coat. All right, so this one ran right in the cuticle. I'm gonna get that out. And then get that flash cure, please. Okay. And just check your line of light, make sure there's nothing more that needs added. As you're looking, you wanna just make sure that you've got a nice line that's glossy. Now I can go in, this one's ready to come out. And to finish this off, I'm just gonna file around the edges. Um, now if you um, are doing this on a square nail, you wanna make sure you zip underneath with your electric file, but with this shape of a nail, you don't do that because there's, it's not curling. There's no really reason to. You don't have the curl that you do with um, with the other. Now, this one ran before it got finished curing. So what I'm gonna do is take this bit and just carefully come around the edge because you don't wanna have that sharp bit for your clients to mess with. It's also not, doesn't feel good. But if you blend that in just with your 2S bit, the same bit that I was using to prep with, you can have a nice um, fixed sidewall there. So now it's no longer in the cuticle. It happens even when you check it before it goes in the light. All it needs is a millisecond for it to do that and drive you crazy. So that, my friends, is how you fix that problem. You don't want to send people out with product in their cuticles. So when at all possible. All right, and I'm gonna use my yummy Cuccio Pro uh, Cranberry Oil today, which smells like the holidays. It's time. Wish I had one that smelled like pumpkin spice. Oh. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. I should tell them. But they do have like a dozen already, so the last thing they need is another one. All right, last one. So that was this whole service start to finish. If you guys hopefully have been watching, a couple of you have been, hopefully you caught something that helps with your services or a little tricky trick. Again, just coming underneath, making sure that everything is smooth. All right, hopefully that helps you guys and you enjoyed this fun little video of these lovely chocolate delights. We'll see you later. Bye.